Hello everyone, welcome back to the channel. Daniel here with another from the Bookshelf Book Review video. So today we are looking at D-Day 1944, Deadly Failure of Allied Bombing on June 6th. So to get straight into this, this is part of the Air Campaign series published by Osprey Publishing. Um, on the blurb it says, June 6th, 1944 is one of the most written about days in military history. But one part of Day Day has been ignored for most of a century. A massive bombing campaign that was launched against the Atlantic Wall early that morning. Professor Stephen A. Borkwe? Borkwe? Pourquoi? Bork? I sincerely apologise for uh, my poor attempt at that name, but um, it says Professor Stephen A. Bork has long studied this crucial aspect of Day Day, and in this important book, he explains how air power was meant to knock out German defences before Allied troops hit the beaches. But, in otherwise, but on an otherwise successful day, these bombing raids were a disaster. Most of the bombs fell behind their targets, leaving the German defences intact and ready to wreak havoc among Allied troops, while the rain of stray bombs killed many French civilians. With rare photographs, including reconnaissance photos of the defences, as well as spectacular new artwork and in form of maps and diagrams, this book answers the crucial question of why the Allies' overwhelming air power on day day failed in its duty. So, like many other books in the Osprey series, this book begins with the introduction and then has um, sort of the timeline at the front. It goes through the opposing commanders, the opposing um, plans, um, before looking at the campaign and then coming to conclusions. So, in sort of the commanders section, it looks at sort of the way the Allied air campaign was structured. Um, there's a couple of photographs of the different individuals, such as Arthur Tedder and Trafford Lee Mallory. Um, the capabilities, this sort of chain of command is mapped out. I'm going through, there's quite a few tables in the first few pages, which, you know, if you like that sort of thing, is great. Like many Osprey books, it's a combination of sort of integrated pictures with the text. The text is a little bit smaller than in a normal Osprey book, but still very legible. It is highly readable. Um, the one fault that I do have with this book though, is that while it looks at the failure of Allied bombing on the 6th of June 1944, it is merely sort of an introduction. The um, What the authors try to do is to cover sort of the Bombing, well, all of the bombing raids that were conducted um, against the German defences, be they against Merville, Point du Hoc, Yerville, etc. etc. Um, but not one of them is covered in sort of great detail. So, for instance, it, it's sort of looking at the campaign, it begins by looking at Bomber Command's efforts during the night of the 5th and 6th. And Bomber Command occupies a total of what's that? Ten pages, which covers strikes on sorry nine pages covering strikes on one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. German batteries. I mean, it covers Wistrom, Long Sumer, Maisy, Holgate, Manfleury, Point du Hoc, and each of them, with the exception of Merville, is allocated approximately one to two paragraphs. 
there's no great detail, which is where this book does lack, because it would be nice to sort of, because there will be out there the account of the many flew this operation, or these operations, I should say, and get their sort of take on things, what it was like for them, how it compared to the sort of bombing raids over Germany, because it has to be remembered that the bombing forces of the 8th Air Force and RF Bomber Command were put under General Eisenhower to assist with the invasion, so it would be nice to cover all of that. Um, predominantly, though, this work focuses on the US Air Force, or the US Army Air Force as it went at the time, um, particularly the 8th Air Force and the 9th. Um, basically, it says that the 8th Air Force was ineffective and the 9th Air Force was more effective. The argument is that um, heavy bombers were deployed by the 8th Air Force, which weren't suitable, but that the 9th used smaller bombers, uh, or rather medium bombers, which were more suitable for the task at hand. What is interesting though is it covers the debate that surrounded why the 8th Air Force bombing was so inaccurate in that. So it was known that there was creep back, but it was also recognised that the bombing was inherently inaccurate, despite sort of the use of the Norden bomb site and how fantastic it supposedly was, um, and also the claims that you know with the Norden bomb site you could drop a bomb in a pickle barrel from fifteen thousand feet. It discusses the whole idea that if their force commanders took it upon themselves to issue instructions to their men to say, okay, once you hit the target or the aiming point, wait 15, 20, 30 seconds before releasing the bombs, that way you won't hit any of the troops. And how it became sort of part of the legend that that change was agreed by sort of Schiff and Eisenhower, but in fact it wasn't. Um, any documents pertinent to show that are actually forged. Um, so that was interesting to read. Um, so it is something that is known about that the bombers did delay releasing their bombs. Um, but to read about how that came about was somewhat fascinating. Um, but yeah, it's, it is an overlooked area and one that does definitely deserve more credit. Um, I would say it is probably crucial for any study of data to take this into account. So in that regard, I would definitely recommend a copy of this book. Um, is it the best Osprey book in the world? Probably not, but still, as a 90 page, or 94 page introduction to sort of the bombing campaign on DD, you can't grumble. Um, you know, it is a great introduction, as I've said, it covers everything in sort of broad brush strokes of detail. Um, so I would say it's definitely a good starting point for anyone who's interested in learning about the bombing campaign on D-Day and yeah it's something that can be built upon and hopefully will be built upon by sort of not just this author but other authors um, in the future. So if you've had the pleasure of reading this book uh, let me know what your thoughts are in the comments below um, and we'll catch you next time. Thank you.